60 Minutes Australia keeps churning out war with China propaganda. 60 Minutes Australia has been playing a leading role in saturating Australian airwaves with consent manufacturing messaging in support of militarizing to participate in a U.S. war against China. A segment they ran a year ago is titled Prepare for Armageddon, China's Warning to the World, and features an image of Xi Jinping overlaid with warplanes and explosions and captioned Poking the Panda. Another from a year ago is titled War with China, Are We Closer Than We Think?, Another from 10 months ago is titled, China's New Target in the Battle to Control the Pacific. Another from 6 months ago is titled, Inside the Battle for Taiwan and China's Looming War Threat. Another from 2 months ago is titled, Is the Navy Ready? How the U.S. is Preparing Amid a Naval Buildup in China. All of these segments have millions of views on YouTube alone. Now, this past weekend, 60 Minutes Australia has aired back-to-back segments titled The Real Top Gun, U.S. Military and Heated Standoff with China, and Five Countries Secretly Sharing Intelligence Say China is the Number One Threat, both of which are as jaw-droppingly propagandistic as anything I've ever seen. It might sound like twisted logic, but military forces everywhere argue that the greater the firepower they possess, the greater the chance of maintaining peace, opens 60 Minutes Australia's Amelia Adams. In other words, massive weaponry is the best deterrent to war. Right now, the theory is being tested like never before, and much of it is happening in Australia's backyard, the Indo-Pacific region. The United States wants the world, and more particularly China, to know of its increasing presence there, and to do that it's putting on a spectacular show. What follows is 19 minutes of overproduced footage displaying this massive weaponry while Adams oohs and ahs and gives slobberingly sycophantic interviews to U.S. military officials. There's something utterly mesmerizing about the F-35 jet, Adams moans. The sound, the heat, and the power put this supersonic stealth fighter in a league of its own. Colonel, these are some very impressive machines you're in charge of, she gushes to an officer on an aircraft carrier. Yes, ma'am, the colonel replies. Jesus, lady, do your orgasming off camera. Contrast this glowing, ecstatic revelry with Adams's open hostility later in the clip toward a Chinese think tanker named Henry Wang claiming that he was trying to rewrite history for dismissing panic about a Chinese military buildup by pointing out, 100% correctly, that China is spending a lower percentage of its GDP on its military than Western nations. Every command, every maneuver is being fine-tuned on this vast blue stage, where China has proven to be a bad actor. Playing a long game of intimidating Pacific nations, Adams proclaims, over helicopter footage of U.S. warships. But the U.S. and its allies aren't having it, bolstering their defenses, and it's an impressive display. I defy you to find me footage more brazenly propagandistic than this, from any point in history. This is supposed to be a news show, run by people who purport to be journalists, Yet they're engaging in propaganda that looks like it came from a Sacha Baron Cohen spoof on a third world dictatorship. As I never tire of pointing out, the claim that the U.S. has been militarily encircling its number one geopolitical rival defensively is the single dumbest thing the Empire asks us to believe these days. The U.S. is surrounding China with war machinery in ways that it would consider an outrageously aggressive provocation if the same were done in its neck of the woods which means the U.S. is plainly the aggressor in this standoff, and China is plainly reacting defensively to those aggressions. While the first segment unquestioningly regurgitates Pentagon narratives and gives supportive interviews to military officials, the second segment unquestioningly regurgitates talking points from the Western intelligence cartel and gives supportive interviews to Five Eyes spooks. Showing off deadly weaponry and massive war games is a tactic China and the United States both use to try to avoid full-on combat, says 60 Minutes Australia's Nick McKenzie in introduction. But the truth is the two countries, as well as other nations including Australia, are already battling it out in an invisible war. There are no frontline soldiers, but there are significant skirmishes. Until now, these conflicts have been kept quiet, 
but key members of a secretive alliance of top cops from Australia, the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and New Zealand are about to change that. Their group is called the Five Eyes, and tonight they want you to know what they see, says Mackenzie, which is the same as saying, we're going to tell you what the Five Eyes intelligence agencies told us to tell you. Mackenzie literally just assembles a bunch of Five Eyes officials to tell Australians that China is bad and dangerous, and then disguises the Western intelligence cartel advancing its own information interests as a real news story. There is one threat that alarms our partners more than any other, Mackenzie says over dramatic music, asking, which state actor is the key threat to democracy in Australia and amongst the Five Eyes partners? and presenting a montage of Western intelligence operatives answering, you guessed it, China. The Americans describe a growing menace on our doorstep, flowing from China's increasing influence in the region, Mackenzie says, before asking an American official, do you see the Chinese state preying on Pacific Island nations? I believe so, yes, the official responds. Western journalism, ladies and gents. Australians are particularly vulnerable to propaganda because Australia has the most concentrated media ownership in the Western world, dominating, dominated by a powerful duopoly of Nine Entertainment, who airs 60 Minutes, and the Murdoch-owned News Corp. This vulnerability is being fully exploited as the time comes for the Western Empire to beat the war drums against China. We are being hammered by this narrative that massive weaponry is the best deterrent to war when all facts and evidence say the exact opposite is true. It was the military encroachment against Russia and the conversion of Ukraine into a NATO military asset which provoked Putin to invade Ukraine, and all the militarization against China that we are seeing is only inflaming tensions and making war more likely. And, I mean, of course it is. Even a casual glance at the Cuban Missile Crisis reveals that powerful nations don't take kindly to having menacing forces placed near their borders. So much of the propaganda indoctrination we're subjected to in the 2020s revolves around convincing people to believe that Russia and China should react completely differently than the way the U.S. would react if foreign proxy forces were being amassed along its borders. We need to do everything we can to fight against this indoctrination now, because if we wait until the war actually starts, it will likely be too late to resist.